Hello my friends, it's spring and I'm a little bit behind. <clears throat> I got a uh, new puppy of course uh, about a month ago I guess now and for the last couple of weeks I've been sick so I haven't been able to do very much gardening in between uh, taking care of the dog and then rescuing her from the uh, emergency vet where I went just to pick up some antibiotics. <laughs> That's another story for another video. But anyways, uh, what I have here is some neglected seedlings. <clears throat> They've been in here at least three weeks. Been in here maybe a month almost. That's what I mean about neglected, I don't even know. But this isn't a regular seedling mix either. Well, it is, but uh, with biochar added. So with neglect and just... Uh, rainwater. I've uh, kept them alive a lot longer than the potting mix would have provided nutrients for. So I'll do a video on that also, how to start uh, seeds with biochar. But this uh, video we'll be using biochar to make a potting mix and we'll be uh, repotting these seedlings as they need uh, <laughs> She wanted to be the center of attention, I guess. Or she's talking to the squirrel, responding to the squirrel. I also hear behind me. But yeah, so we're going to take these uh, neglected seedlings and give them a nice, awesome potting soil mix, which I have going right here. So what I'm going to use as a base, just as a filler, as material, like a, a medium, right? is the cheapest uh, organic potting soil, right? It's just like shredded up uh, tree bark and stuff. Waste material, right? And then they uh, put some fancy label on it. It's fairly affordable. This is the Costco stuff. You'll hear lots of bad stuff on the Facebook groups about it. But I'm not relying on it itself, okay? It's a mixture of peat, right? And uh, But mostly just uh, ground up bark. <clears throat> right now because uh, my seedlings are tomatoes and peppers I like to add calcium and no eggshells do not do anything if you add eggshells what you need is either horticultural lime or what is called dolomite lime both these things will add calcium to your plants the only difference is the inactive mineral one will be magnesium, and I can't remember offhand, don't have my glasses to check the label. Uh, calcium carbonate, I think, is the other one. I could be wrong, though. Leave it in the comments if I am. <laughs> okay, so to make any, any medium, it could be cocoa coir, it could be peat moss, it could be whatever it is. The cheapest, it could be last year's potty mix, whatever it is you want to use. You don't need to buy the expensive stuff if you have biochar okay you'll take any any growing medium and supercharge it okay and then I'm gonna add calcium also this is also organic and it's fairly affordable you know that small bucket I've had for years now so we only add a bit when you're planting tomatoes and uh, peppers it prevents blossom end rot on the peppers or on the tomatoes and it prevents soft spots on the peppers and I hope the wind's not screwing up the audio. So this is what I'm gonna plant into just uh, you know drinking cups and I took a uh, drill and drilled some holes in the lowest part of the bottom for it to drain. Okay so here's my biochar. This is just some uh, beans I have to plant also. So this is my biochar. What I've done is uh, it's fully charged I have uh, run it through a quarter, quarter inch hardware cloth screen and uh, it's pretty dry right now but I'll add a little bit of water and what else I'm going to do is mix some of this uh, potty mix in with biochar add some lime and calcium and I'm going to pot those seedlings into these cups 
And since they've been out here for a little while, they are, you know, getting acclimated to the outside from being inside. I'll just leave these cups outside probably until I get an opportunity <coughs> to actually plant it out in the garden. <coughs> My dog's feeling a little better, but uh, yeah, uh, probably could take a week, who knows. It's taken me this long to get stuff done that uh, should have been done a month ago. So I'll just put this on a tripod and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna do my mix. First thing first, uh, when working with the <clears throat> biochar, right? It's a carbon crystal. Uh, if it dries out, the powders or the dust that comes off of it can be damaging to the lungs. So to avoid that, without wearing a mask or anything, just wet it down a bit. And then when you work with it, it won't, uh, it's really dry. You won't get dust in your lungs. You can wear a mask. Someone commented <clears throat> last time I uh, suggested wearing a mask that how come everyone making these videos saying you should wear a mask or never wearing a mask. Yeah. If it's dry, and you're noticing a dust cloud, a mask would be much safer. Okay, so you can see this is not awesome stuff. It's just, uh, it's old, I think it's like two years old maybe. I don't use very much store-bought anything. Uh, sulfur for potatoes and uh, lime for uh, tomatoes and peppers and that's pretty much the only thing store bought and once in a while some potting mix the only reason to buy potting mix is uh, usually most of it comes <coughs> without too many bugs whereas if I make my own from outside I have brought soils in and infested the house you know, little flying things. Yeah, it's not as quick as I thought it would be because it's all... Like, see, you know, there's big rocks in here, right? What's that about? A piece of concrete or something, right? And it's all a bunch of wood chips and stuff. Like, this is poor quality. If you used it by, by itself, you planted your house plants in it, I don't imagine they would do so well. Well without being fed chemical fertilizers, right? Plant food in each watering. I guess if you're feeding plant food, it doesn't matter what uh, the medium is. But taking any medium, even for the indoor growers, if you add biochar, right? It's going to do what adding perlite or vermiculite does. It's going to retain water. It's going to make the soil loose. Okay. It also retains holes and nutrients. And all the bioactive compounds produced by all the microorganisms. It provides habitat for the microorganisms. And it's going to change the physical <coughs> characteristics and texture of of whatever you add it to, right? In this case, this cheap, uh, cheap pot in mix. And I like to add, you know, a good amount of biochar. Yeah, this is going to be planted into my garden also. I right? incorporate it into my soils. So basically, this uh, pot in mix, right? As you can see, it's just filler. Look at the difference. Okay, so that really terrible looking potty mix, right? On one hand, and then the result of adding biochar in the other hand, right? You can see it changes it physically right before your eyes. This is why I use it. Right? I'm building right here, right before your eyes with really Cheap ingredients, the biochar I made myself, and this uh, Costco uh, 
potting soil that everyone complains about being uh, terrible. But it's cheap, right? It's really cheap. And I'm all about cheap. Cheap and easy. Cheap, easy, and organic, of course. So much nowadays, uh, so much nowadays is not really healthy for you. Alright, sprayed with chemicals, low in nutrients. Yeah, there's whispers of mRNA now in the food sources. It's a good time to be learning how to be more self-sufficient with growing food. And really I feel the key to making that easy is biochar. You basically make the biochar anywhere and you can take the biochar and turn soil of any condition anywhere in the world into something rich and dark and loose and well draining yet retains nutrients right you don't get as much nutrient leaching through it I can go on and on okay so that's good enough to me as you can see it changed what it looks like what it is yeah, this will it will come together. Now it looks more like a rich compost than the cheapest potting mix you can buy. Okay, to this, because I'm planting again tomatoes and peppers, this is going to prevent blossom end rot. Because those uh, seeds were planted in the seed mix, I also added some of this and some biochar to the seed mix. I'll do a video on that. Uh, maybe not with the lime, but at least with the biochar in a seedling mix or seed mix to start seeds with in case if you're like me and get distracted or have emergencies with the dog um, and your plants sit they won't wither and die it would actually grow not quite as fast as they would if they had a larger container each but uh, yeah biochar will save your butt so the horticultural lime is a granular it slowly dissolves in the soil and it is calcium, plant ready calcium. And this one isn't open. I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, these are both calcium. They have different names on their packaging. One sold for your your lawn, one sold for your garden. The only difference is one is uh, the inactive material and one is magnesium and the other one is uh, Calcium. This one looks a little different. The magnesium gives it a different color, a little darker. Either one is fine. How much to apply? You can follow directions on the bag. I just want to make sure there's some in each. No, not much, but some. All right, and it doesn't matter which one. Like I said, it doesn't matter which one you use. The inactive ingredient is just that. It's inactive. The plants don't care if it's calcium based or magnesium or whatever it is. Right? It's an act. It's a chemical structure prevents it from interacting with other chemicals in this environment except under certain circumstances. Right? Now uh, that's also the reason eggshells are useless. Okay? This is the form of calcium and the eggshells chemically bonded at an atomic level, so unless you break those bonds with acid or extreme heat, like say adding your eggshells to the biochar, which will leave calcium crystal in with the carbon crystal in your biochar, that is more efficient in adding uh, calcium to your garden than uh, putting eggshells in it. I also do a video on that as I have eggshells that went in my garden 10 years ago and look like I put them in yesterday. So, there you go. Again, you got uh, calcium. You got your medium, which could be anything. Cocoa coir, peat moss, uh, whatever. Cheapest stuff in a bag you can find on sale at the end of season. Leave it in your garage. Forget about it for two years. And, uh, yeah, I know. You got excellent stuff. Actually, I didn't mix this in very well. 
I mix and stuff by hand too. You know, it's hard to do if you have a large area you're covering quickly. Then the shovel works just fine. But I don't know. Something after after years of gardening, it's like you can feel. I don't know. It's like a job satisfaction thing. Okay, so I'm not going to bother uh, adding any more water yet. Yeah. Now I'm going to do this with the camera. Damage the plants just for a video or something. Alright, so this is also good. You know, this is what is called a leggy seedling. You got a long, long stem before you get to the top leaves, right? And they're kind of weak and they fall over easy. And it's no problem. It's actually beneficial. If I bury this, right? It'll grow roots all the way up the stem. Both the tomatoes and the peppers. Yeah, just basically uh, throw some of the mix in the cup. Pop these out of the... I always hate popping these out. Okay. Now a lot of people say you can get rid of the weakest one, right? Or you could separate them. Be easier if I didn't leave them in there for a month or whatever. I don't really care. I don't see it makes much difference. And if I get one or two extra jalapeno peppers, uh, I don't mind. So even that's too much because they've grown so leggy. So I'm just going to put maybe less than an inch of them on them. I'm going to squish up, break up the roots a bit, which is fine. You want to get the roots all in one spot growing. Okay. Now the plant is fairly low in the cup. Is it room to grow? And uh, the smaller one doesn't make it, whatever. Even that. I should have larger cups. Actually, that's okay. Let's pull that out of there. I could still plant that, it should be fine. There, that's it. The level will go down a bit as you water. Also, I don't use markers or anything. What I do is I write down what seeds are in what cells, kind of like in lines on a piece of paper. But you don't have handy. So I couldn't tell you the varieties here. I've got three different tomatoes I'll take from the outside. Yeah, so you can tease out the roots so they go out in every direction. You can plant it very low. And all of that weak stem that was letting the plant fall over. It's now going to become a strong root system. Even when I plant this out again in the garden, you can do the same. So I'm just going to continue along like that until I have these all transferred into the cups. And I just use a you know, drink, drink carton and uh, put them all in here. Water them, leave them outside, gradually give them some sun to acclimate them to the weather out here. And within the next week or so, they should be out in the garden. Uh, they would grow faster in the house under the lights, but like I said, I've been uh, preoccupied with a sick dog. I don't have a lot of time or space organized. So I'll certainly continue doing this. And uh, yeah, they should uh, grow up nice and strong. I'm kind of behind the ball. That's how easy it is to make a seedling mix, a potting mix for your house plants, you know, any sort of soil mix. Okay, in this case, it's for up planting, you know, up potting, changing the pot size of your seedlings. So, even the one I pulled out, it's got roots on it, and I can plant it Might as well. I would have grown a bean in there. Okay, so it doesn't have a plug along with soil plug with it. So 
Uh, just gotta hold it with your fingers. Be a little more careful, but not so careful, right? They're not like, you know, so delicate, right? You're all people, root shots and stuff. There are some species of plants that do not like being transplanted. And that's the tricky part of gardening. You have to learn each plant. But there are some simple things you can do to make growing all plants easy. And one of those simple things is biochar. So my friends, if you found any of this interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please throw me a thumbs up. And if you want more you know, easy, affordable, organic, and sustainable gardening that you can do yourself at home, whether it's in the city, in the country, or on a farm, wherever you're at, whatever your soil type, I can help you out, so please subscribe, join the channel as a friend, and uh, can't wait to get to know you. Have a great day, wherever you are, whenever you watch this. Peace!